let's start with uh, varun uh, varun uh, please uh, tell us what are the top five things that you would do practically when you hit office probably on uh, on fourth morning or whenever you plan to do it what would be those five things so ajay we uh, frankly i what what whatever i would do when the lockdown opens has already started to happen uh, frankly you know we uh, for uh, the journey for us has been a very very different uh, one because we are in essential goods and i'm sure hari is uh, you know been through the same thing uh, you know as we have but you know just to start off uh, my perspective on this whole thing uh, first of all i think it's a event which is a great leveler never in recorded history has there been s- such a widespread disruption and in equal measure all over the world all at the same time right i can't think of anything else that has uh, been of such uh, magnitude right second i think all assumptions are being smashed right and continuously new are being you know new assumptions are coming in and they are being challenged right so uh, we are all learning to avoid hindsight bias and uh, we are taking uncertainty very very seriously all of us in in whatever that we are doing right so i think th- there isn't any computer program which could have you know predicted or given us uh, you know a, a sort of a forecast on what what's going to happen right uh, we are under attack all of us are under attack but there is no physical force which is attacking us there is no enemy really who's coming after us it's just nature which is which has attacked us at this point in time and uh, when uh, even like this happens you don't have a common enemy so what do you do uh, the best thing that you can do at at a time like this is to adapt right and the challenge really for all of us is that of adaptation uh, and this is really testing us on a day to day basis on what is the capability that we have uh, to to adapt to a situation like this uh and frankly the way the way i look at it uh you know i am looking at this crisis to build resilience my own resilience my organization's resilience and also productivity as we go forward right so that to my mind is uh what this is all about now just quickly getting to uh, what's happening uh, as i see it on the world stage clearly china is becoming the villain of the piece in this whole thing right but uh, you know they are uh, doing things in their own way uh, you know they, they 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 continue to be decisive and progressive in their own self centered way uh, us has clearly uh, you know lost out in this race uh, you know as trump handles this situation uh, very clearly us is losing this race of uh you know taking the leadership in a crisis like this our prime minister has come out on top i i must say that he's taken he's been very very decisive uh, and he's taken this challenge very very seriously the, the issue really is going to be how do you sustain this long term lockdown uh, as it destroys economic uh, viability for a somewhat uh, challenged uh, and i would say a fragile economy like india right so uh, and other other challenges that exist in india uh, clearly are i would say that as a country we uh, do not have the same hygiene habits that even some of our poor neighbors have and i worked in various countries i worked in the philippines and uh, in in vietnam and you know so all all of these countries the per capita income is about the same but as you walk down a road you will see you know everything is neat and tidy uh, it might not be the best infrastructure but people are clean people are wearing clean clothes you know they might not be expensive clothes but clean clothes if you were to do that uh, you know in in your part of the country ajay uh, in delhi you know if you were to walk or even in bombay if you were to you will see that people do not care too much about their hygiene you know the the clothes will be dirty wouldn't be washed etc so i think this is going to teach us Uh, a lesson or two as far as hygiene is concerned uh, medical aid i think we we are uh, a great country for medical aid we have people coming in but we still haven't had the the ability to create the kind of infrastructure that is required for uh, this kind of a thing 
so I think those are the challenges that we'll face, right? Uh, but I think the most important thing, finally, for a country like India will be to create a herd immunity uh, for people. Uh, I think that's, that's how it's going to happen. Protect the old and the weak and get, let, let the strong and the young to get to work and uh, do what is required. I think that's, that's what's uh, going to be uh, really, really important because otherwise we will test our uh, medical infrastructure uh, to a limit where it will start to crack up. Right? Now, uh, I, I, from an organization standpoint, uh, how have we coped uh, with this? I think we've coped uh, reasonably well to this situation. Uh, obviously, the first 10 days was uh, a shock for all of us and we didn't know what to do. So we were struggling. Uh, the first thing that we did, uh, we, we first principle that I followed was that connectivity and trust, right, uh, are the best glue for, uh, for a team in times of crisis. So, uh, you know, we, we did, we made sure that we created that connectivity and that trust. Uh, so we set out some protocols. The first uh, protocol was obviously on environment, health and safety, right? So we had very clear SOPs for our uh, factories, whatever was operating, right? Very clear SOPs, uh, social distancing, whatever else that we are talking about. I'm not going to get into the details, but that was very, very important. We also start. We also got COVID insurance for any person who was in any way exposed to the external environment. So we did that. Uh, we also, you know, created uh, the right transportation for people who were coming from uh, villages close to our plants, etc., with the right distancing between, uh, you know, the people sitting in the bus, etc. So all of that was done. So that was the first and most important thing. Second. Uh, what I did from maybe the third day onwards, uh, we started a daily review meeting, you know, and believe me, the connectivity hasn't been like this uh, in the last seven years that I've been with the organization. So we have a daily review meeting where we, you know, every day uh, we, we talk about what is the progress of the last day, what are the priorities as we go forward. And the entire uh, executive committee is on that meeting. We also, it was very important to get government connectivity because, uh, you know, as all of you must have felt as well, it was very important to get permissions. It was very important to, you know, get them to understand the issues that you were facing on the ground. So government connectivity was extremely important. Uh, then we also, I started a weekly town hall meeting because it was important to tell the entire organization on what was the progress being made and also to listen to them, right? Listening to them was also important because, you know, when you are sitting at home, uh, idle mind is a devil's workshop. So a lot of things sort of start coming in and you're reading all every day, you're reading news of job losses and this and that. So they want to talk. So listening was very, very important. And we, we, we did that as well. Um, we tightened our costs to the limit, right? And the principle was no more capital expenditure till it becomes extremely, extremely necessary, right? Uh, we also did a protocol on how do we connect with our customers remotely, right? So all of us who were sitting at home, we, we've got a database. So we uh, chalked out which town, village we are going to be uh, adopting. And we would connect with 40 customers every day on the phone just to check out what was happening, whether they were getting uh, you know, our stocks, whether what was the situation on the ground, uh, were they safe, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that protocol worked really well. And we compiled that into a report and we see it in our daily meetings, right? So uh, we did that. We also tied up with CII uh, to train uh, stores on how they should, uh, you know, uh, uh, create the atmosphere within the store to keep the store owner uh, safe as well as the customers safe. This is an initiative called the Suraksha Store, uh, which we are a part of. Uh, it's a, uh, you know, a lot of uh, FMCGs, about 12 FMCGs are a part of this. So we did that as well. Uh, so I think uh, I am quite enjoying this new way of life. Frankly, if you think about it, uh, business is now uh, stable and moving in the right direction. 
you know, frankly, all meetings start on time and end on time. Uh, we we are we are much more better connected than we've ever been in the past. We are working harder than we worked in the past. So it's a great place to be, and I think uh, there is a lot that we can get out of it uh, as we move forward. So that's my uh, five things. I'm sorry I, I took that to more than five, but that's my uh, take on the situation. Uh, not a worry, Varun. All pearls of wisdom. Honestly, I loved the last statement of yours that you are enjoying. You and your team are enjoying this. Yeah. The key message is that a, a big CEO of the country is saying that even in adversity, find ways of enjoying it. While uh, I didn't hear too many strategic things, and the reason being that there is so much of volatility and ambiguity in the whole environment, but how to cope with uncertainty, and most importantly, how do you still do cultural binding, the connect and connectivity and trust building to basically reinforce your culture, where some of the big takeouts for me, brilliant. <laughs>